All right. Um, <clears throat> so this is the, the last lecture, the first lecture in a while, but the last lecture for the semester. Um, the guest lectures didn't really pan out. The technical writing one didn't pan out. Um, so this is it. Uh, and so hopefully you watched um, the old, I think 2003 or something like that. It was pretty old, 2013 maybe. Um, lecture about differential equations. Uh, we talked briefly about Euler's method. Now uh, we'll use E's, Engineering Equation Solver, um, and implement uh, Euler's method within E's, right? And that's what you'll have to do for the last lab uh, of, the, uh, of the semester. So um, here we are. Uh, here's Citrix, right? For those of you who are running uh, you know, um, E's remotely, uh, we click on E's. <coughs> oh, we've got to log in. This is using your CAE credentials. Uh, I, I still don't know what that is. Someday I'll find out what that really is. Sometimes it takes a little bit for ease to start up. Maybe I have to pause this. Cue the girl from Ipanema. There we go. Okay. So, um, all right. Uh, as we recalled, um, we are uh, finding rabbit population for one uh, year. All right. And um, we'll start out with, uh, let's see, um, the initial population. And I'm going to use uh, the little zero here, right? Remember we used the array variable. Uh, let's say, uh, how about rabbit population in Australia? Now, I don't know anything about biology or zoology or plants or even Australia for that matter. But I know that at some point, some people brought us rabbits to Australia for a food source and they got loose. They have no natural predators. So there we go. All right. Um, and we know that our governing equation for growth, just basic growth, is dpdt equals some constant <coughs> times uh, the current population. Right. Well, let, let's call that governing equation. So governing equation is dpdt equals k times p. All right. Uh, we know that k um, equals uh, what is that? K equals zero point one. I'm not sure about the units right there, but we'll figure that out. Um, and I think that's all we really need to know, right? Uh, and so what we'll do is say that dpdt, right, the first increase um, in the rabbit population uh, will be, so it'll be zero, right, dpdt zero uh, equals k times p zero, right, so that means um, the growth right now is the growth rate times the population right now, all right, but now we need to take Let's, let's check this here. I've got three equations and three variables. So I could solve this. Let's solve it. Um, and then I know that k equals 0.1. Oh, I'm not seeing my uh, arrays table. All right, so in my array table, dpdt equals 10. Right, so it's 10%. There's 100 rabbits to start with. The growth rate is 10%. So my growth is um, dpdt is 10. All right, so this makes sense. That's my arrays table there. So let's slide that over there so we can see it in the future. Um, but we always got to check units. One of the most awesome thing about E's is the units. So let's go up here and check units. Uh, no units problems detected. That's fine because I haven't assigned any units. So I go up to this little box here. Uh, units. All right. So DPDT, right? Now, for those who have taken calculus, right, you, you, a lot of times in calculus, you just ignore units. But a change in population for the change in time, um, well, let's do this first. Units population is in rabbits. No, rabbits is not a unit in E's, nor is aardvarks or pencils or coffee cups. Uh, so we'll just say n. So when we're just counting things, um, we'll use n for that. Units of dpdt, the change in the number of rabbits for the change in time must be n per week. n per week, right? So let's try that. Let's see what happens. Let's check the units here. All right, so now we have a problem. Um, our governing equation is rabbits per week equals um, some constant times 
P. So the growth rate is per time. It's got to be just per time. So that's, we got to change that uh, to go up here to units again. And so that will be just one per week. Okay. And let's check our units now. All right, good. No units problems corrected. So uh, we can solve this again. We still don't, oh, uh, click on, oh yeah, k equals 0.1 per week, and then over here we've got um, rabbits per week. It's growing at 10 rabbits per week, uh, and there's 100 rabbits. All right, so good, we're good. Um, now what we need to do is, uh, let's see, for one year, so we got, we got some work to do. Well, um, p1, right, the p at, p at the end of the first week, equals um, p the initial population, which is p0, plus um, dp dt, right? dp dt, the growth rate um, in the first week. So dp dt is 0. Equals. So that's uh, population after first week. And so this is growth rate growth rate uh, after, during, uh, during first week, let's call that, and then this is just the growth rate, uh, seems like a problem, whatever, growth rate constant, we call it, and the population here, this is initial population. All right, so now, um, We've got that plus that plus that. All right, so the population after the first week, uh, as we looked at, is the population um, plus how much it grew. All right, so let's check that. All right, four equations and four variables are all good. We'll solve it. Da, 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 da. Unit problem. Unit problem. What's the unit problem? The dimensions of population. Oh. Oh, yeah, 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 right. Um, yeah, that's, that, that's a problem, right? Because I can't do this. I can't take a population and add it to a rate, right? This is rabbits, and this is rabbits per week. Oh, I know what we do. Um, so let's change this. Okay, let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that. So for, get, for the units to work out with this, governing equation, so the population equals, so this has to be an increment, right? So times, it's rabbits per week times, um, one week. So we'll call it delta t. Delta t. Uh, like that. So delta t is one week. So we're going to grow. So the time step is going to be one week. So let's make a new variable here. Um, <coughs> delta t. Because we're going to calculate the population every week. So delta t equals one. And this is the time step. So now, um, let's check that. We still have five equations and five variables. All right, we're all good. Uh, check the units. Ah, what the heck is going on here, right? Delta T. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right, okay. So I have to go back here. Um, I have to give units to my time step. My time step is um, delta T is one week. All right, now let's check that. So I'm going to check my units here. Now I have no unit problems. And I can solve it again. And so now I can see that, um, let's see, do I have one more? P, oh, I can scroll this down a little bit. Yeah, 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 there we go. So my growth rate, right, is 10%. So I started, you know, the, the, the British, English, whoever they were at the time, they showed up in Australia with 100 rabbits. The growth rate is 10%. So the first week, they're going to gain by 10. So at the end of the first week, they'll have 110. All right, so this makes sense. Um, okay, so population of the first week. All right, so now we have a new population, um, dp dt1, right? So the growth rate during the first week, um, or you know, after the first week, is uh, k times the population during that next week the first full week, right? Okay, so that's um, growth rate uh, during uh, second week, right? Because um, this is now the 
one are, are kind of point in time, right? Like I'm 47 years old, but I'm actually in my 48th year, right? So the growth rate during the second week is this. And then um, I think I can say my population uh, at the end of the second week, P2 equals the population at the end of the first week, one plus, uh, let's see, it's the growth rate, dp dt1 times, that really bothers me here, I'm going to call this delta t, delta, easier to read that way, let me just have to change it up here, delta t times uh, delta t, right, and, and why do I do this? A, because that's the right way to do it, but B, to get the units to be right, this is rabbits, equals rabbits plus rabbits per week times weeks, okay, and then um, this is population after second week. All right. Now let's check that. How are we doing? Seven and seven. I love having seven and seven. So I'm going to save it whenever I have the right number of equations. Okay. Oh, I got to save this in the box. Uh, and I'll put it in ME201. Where is ME201? There. Fall 2020, um, lectures, week 14, the last one, and we'll call this Year of the Rabbit, and I still will call it um, ME201 Euler Ease. All right, save that. And again, cue the, uh, the smooth jazz music while we wait for this to happen. Because the, the problem is this has to go to, you know, it's going from my computer to the CE machine, from CE machine to box, right, which is who knows where in the cloud. Uh, so this, the first time you save it takes a long time because we have to write all sorts of directories all over the place. All right. So now um, let's solve this one. Okay, yeah, no unit problems, everything's good, so how are we doing? We can scroll this down. So now, yeah, we know this at the end of the second week, um, we have 121. Um, 121 rabbits. All right, so I've got to go, let's see, at the end of one year, there'll be 52 weeks. Well, let's keep cranking here. Um, so now I know dp, dt at the end of the um, first week. Or at the end of the second week, uh, will equal k times the population um, during the second week. Um, and then, let's see, then I've got to say the population, then uh, at the end of that week, right, um, the third week is p2 plus dp dt 2 times delta t, right? Let's see, let's check units. Now I'm starting to get nervous. I'm screwing up nope, 9 and 9, so that's good. Uh, and then population, this is population after third week. All right, so that's not too bad. Um, so really, I, I can see a pattern here. So I've only got 52, 49 of these to go. You can maybe go make some coffee or make breakfast or whatever you do and then come back. No, 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 I'm just kidding. Um, there's got to be a better way, right? Um, so many of you, you know, or I know you've used loops and stuff like that to, to make measurements and to average measurements um, and to do all this stuff in, in MATLAB, or not MATLAB, Arduino. Uh, but we can do something similar. Remember, this is not code. Right? We're not writing computer code with a bunch of assignments. We're writing a system of equations. So let's think about how we do that using ease, knowing that this is an equation solver, not computer code. Right? So I, I notice here, what do I do? I figure out a rate, and then a, a new population, and then a rate, and then a new population, and then a rate, and then a new population. So now I'm going to use a really clever little tool in, um, in ease. I've got to give myself some room here. And that is called the duplicate function. I'm going to duplicate, duplicate, uh, i equals 1 to 52, right? So I'm going to do this for 52 weeks. Uh, and then I go down here and I say n, all right? And so what am I going to duplicate? The general pattern that I see here is I find out a new growth rate, right? So dp dt 
i, right, i is just my index here, that is a count through this thing, equals k, my growth rate, which I've already defined, um, times, let's see, the rate is times the population at that same week. Okay, so i, all right, and that's um, growth rate during week i. And then the next thing I do over and over and over again, it seems like I get a growth rate and then a population, a growth rate population, a growth rate population. All right, so then we go the new population, population sub i equals, um, I'm going to put some line space here so we can see a little better, population equals population, oh, no, 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 the population that we start the one before it. So what should I do here? I'm going to say that this is oh, population I plus one. That's what I want to do, right? So the population, because I, I look at my indices, a growth rate, and then the population, the next population, growth rate and the next population. So population I plus one is going to be the population at I plus uh, dpdt. Which one is that? Okay, so it's two is one and one, three is two and two. Okay, so I got the pattern figured out there. So it's the pop the growth rate during the previous week I um, times my delta t. Okay, so population at the population at the end of week I. All right, so the new population. All right, now how does that work? Okay, so I so check that. Whoa, what is going on here? 113 equations, 109, the problem's over-specified. What's going on? Okay, so for starters, all right, so I, I'm, I'm defining dpdt1, but I've already defined dpdt1. In fact, I've already defined p0. Oh, man. Um, okay, so let's... Let's get rid of all this stuff. So what I'm going to do is, is put a curly bracket here. And a curly bracket in these means comment that out. And I'm going to make a curly bracket at the end of this one. Okay, so let's let's check that out. 107, 108. Why is there 108? So I need no wait. So I need so so here I started with the growth rate during week zero. So really this should be from zero, right? So now I've got the growth rate. I'm going to go from a week zero to week 52. I said the population zero there, and then, okay, let's check that. 109, 109, awesome. Okay, so <clears throat> I better save this now that it works. Save. Um, now, this was not easy to get there. All right, let me let me make something very clear here. Notice that I went through and I stepped through this several times. I said, okay, zero, and then population at one, and then population at two, and then population at three. I did this manually, and I figured out every step until I knew what equations am I using and what are the indices that I'm using. Right? Many of you are going to try to cowboy this. You're going to say, oh, I know what to duplicate. I'm going to need to do this every time. <laughs> right? And you're going to write this out and say, no, I'm, I'm short 365 equations. You're going to start making up equations. Don't do that. Right? In fact, many of you are going to go to office hours. And then during office hours, you're going to say, yeah, but I'm short 365 equations. And your essay or me will say, well, did you go through? No. Okay. Go through. Solve the first several time steps first. Figure out what is the pattern. It becomes very, very obvious what the pattern is. Then write the duplicate loop. Don't try to do it a different way. Otherwise, we'll get really frustrated. Right? Okay. Don't do that. So now I've got, um, uh, let's see, I've got 109 equations. Let's solve this thing. Shouldn't take too, wow, that's amazing how fast that solves. Uh, and here we go. Here's our, um, here's all our data. All right? Look at that. And so we start out with just 10, 100 rabbits. Man, look at that, 15,000 rabbits, 14,000 rabbits. That's amazing. 
Now, tabulated data like this is, you know, maybe accountants like that, but engineers don't like this. We like to see plots. All right, so let's plot this. Um, let's plot the population. So we go up here. To, let's save this again. Save it. I like to save things just in case. Oh, you know, we haven't done we haven't done a unit check in a while. Let's check the units. No unit problems. Oh, this is great. All right, and now we're going to go to plot and make a new plot window. X, Y, plot. I want to plot rabbits against time. I don't have time. Ugh. All right, well, what is our time? Our time starts as weeks. Um, so let's see, how do we do that here? We need T. Well, since we're going by every week, I can just say that the time I equals I. Uh, uh, all right. Yeah, I think that's right, because then it goes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to 52. All right, let's, um, this makes me nervous here, right? When it, whenever I, here, I'm totally trying to cowboy it, right? And I'm doing exactly what I just said not to do. Time equals, okay, so let's check that. Oh, 162, 162, amazing, right? I just added 53 equations. Oh, that's weird, right, but whatever. 162, 162, sweet. Check the units. No unit problems are detected. Awesome. Um, and so I'm going to say, let's solve this. And now I've got an extra column over here. I've got time, right? At zero, right? I've got 100 rabbits. One, 110. Two, at you know, at the end of week two, I've got 121. Awesome, right? So this is working just fantastic. Uh, and I still have 14,204. All right. Now, uh, now I can make a plot of this. Um, wait a minute. Check my units here. Uh, I don't want to show my array variables because now look at I've got every single time step and everything. So I'm going to get rid of this show array variables here. Don't want to do that. Time. Time is in weeks. All right, that's bad. Okay, so let's check that. Um, check our units. No unit problems detected. Okay. Um, and then now let's make a plot. Plot. New plot window. Plot, new plot window, nice horizontal. I want to plot time on the x-axis, population on the y-axis. Uh, over here, I, I don't know if I mentioned this in a previous video, um, you got to make sure to always click automatic update. Uh, so that way, anytime you make a, a change, um, you can do that. All right, so everything looks good. This is a model, a, a subtle thing here. We don't actually want symbols in a model. We, we just want a line, so that's fine. Okay, looks good. Whoop! Missing data in row 52 for TI. Missing data? Oh, man. None of this is going right today. No, 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 no. Let, let, let's, let's take a closer look here. No, cancel that. Get out of there. Missing data? What am I missing? Ah! Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so for my last time step, I calculated the next population over here, even though I stopped at 52, but because I calculated the next population, um, I calculated this, right? That's fine. So I'll just plot it up to 52. So I'm just going to plot the remaining data. i going to go through all this again. Plot, uh, new plot window, x, y, plot. I want to plot time on the x-axis, uh, population on the y-axis. I want automatic updates. I don't want symbols. I just want the line. What? Oh, yeah. We know this, right? Missing data in row 52. Um, yeah, that's fine. Yes. Wow, look at that. All right. So I started here with 100 rabbits, and then I wound up with 15,000 rabbits, right, at the end of this thing, or 14,204, at least, right? So this really shows... Um, you know, the, the power of exponential growth, first of all, uh, and this is especially, um, this is especially relevant now, you know, during a pandemic, because what else grows exponentially, right? The number of cases of COVID-19. Um, so any little thing we can do to change, uh, you know, such as wear your mask, um, you know, masks are not perfect. In fact, they're far from perfect. In fact, they're only about 0.15% effective, but every little bit we do, 
drastically reduces um, the growth rate, right? So, um, so this is a good example of using you know, a differential equation to model growth, right? The rate of population change is proportional to the population itself, right? So it's kind of coupled that way. Um, and we do it by just kind of stepping through time. All right. Uh, so we see that um, at the end of a year, we have 14,204 rabbits, right? Now, we've made a big assumption here, right? We've made a really, really big assumption. Um, and that is that we just go through the time step in one week. The example I like to use is that uh, rabbits don't necessarily procreate only on Sundays or only on Saturdays or Fridays or whatever, right? Rabbits are doing what rabbits do. Uh, They're constantly procreating. So we can do this a little bit better. So let's do um, a delta T is one seventh of a week, right? So let's make the, the growth rate constant number is per week, right? But um, delta T now, instead of, uh, let's call that one seventh, so every day, let's calculate this every day. Um, and so now, if, but if we do this, all right, so the, delta, the time step is only one seventh of a week or one day, let's see how this changes here. Um, we still have 162 and 162, um, but let's go to our plot window here. I think this is plot window. Uh, nope, I'm going to get rid of that. Say, oh, but wait a minute, wait a minute. We've got a problem here. Hold on here. Uh, our time is no longer our time step. Our time is how many time steps have we gone times how long is the time step? Right? So this is the time step, uh, new time steps times length of time step, all right? So let's do that. Still 162, 162. I'm going to save that just because I like when it works out. Uh, and then we'll go to take a look at our plot. Because I clicked on that constant auto update, ah, that didn't work, though. Um, so I'm going to make a new plot. I'm going to plot time again. Oh, I know why, because I never solved it. Um, and look at what I have for my new time. My time, I only made it as far as 7.4 weeks instead of a full week. Interesting, right? Because I didn't, why did I only make it? Oh, I know why, I know why. Right, so my, my time step is now a day, right? But I only did 52 of them, right? So if I go back to the plot window here, now it should have updated. Oh yeah, look at that, right? I stopped. Right, I didn't calculate the full year, so I got to do something different here. What I'm going to do here <coughs> is n steps equals one divided by, um, let's see, delta t. Let's see, number of time steps. Okay, and um, I wonder if that's going to work. Because that might cause me some unit problems. We'll check this out. Uh, and so I'm going to go from 1, 0 to n steps. Let's check that. 28 equations and 28 variables. Uh, what is n steps? Oh, I know why. Because we need to, it's 52. 1,099 equations and 1,099 variables. Why is that? Because I need to get 52 weeks, right? And each one is only one seventh of a week. So the number of steps I have to do is 52 times seven. So whatever that is, um, 364. Uh, and, uh, and so now I've got, I duplicate all three of these equations 364 times plus these. And uh, so that's how we go. All right, so now if we solve this, all right, there we go. Whoa, a potential unit problem. N steps is 52 divided by 1 per week. Okay, so the way we fix that is we will do N weeks equals 52. And so N steps is N weeks. All right, number of weeks is 52. 
And so I got to go to my variable information here. I'm going to say n steps is dimensionless. The number of weeks is week. Um, and so that should give me 1100 and 1100. Check my units. No unit problems detected this time. And I solve this. And then I get this. So now if I scroll way down here, whoa, 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 look at this. Right? The last time I did this, it was only 14,000. But when I, when I allow the rabbits to procreate every time, every day, I get a lot more. Right? So that's very interesting. So the, the better the time steps, the smaller the time steps, the more accurate solution. However, the difference is I've got to solve 1,000 equations rather than just 100. Right? So what if we plot this now? Um, and I go to this plot again. There we go. Now I went out to my full 52 weeks, but I'm at 17,000, right? So my solution changes depending on, I mean, yeah. So my solution changes depending on the accuracy of my time step, the smallness of my time step. Like I said, in reality, these rabbits are pro procreating constantly. So it's a continuous growth. By just going a week at a time, that's an approximation, right? Because the growth rate is constantly changing. But I, so I can't just say, well, this is what it is for the week. No, it's different every day. It's different every hour. Uh, rabbits are constantly being born. Um, so the, to make my numerical approximation better, I make smaller and smaller time steps, right? Better accuracy, more computational time, right? For doing even a thousand equations is trivial, right? For any reasonable computer. Um, but just be aware of that, that there, there's this trade-off between accuracy and computing power. All right, so uh, I think that's all you need to know. Um, for the lab this week, you will be, um, you know, it's, it's a little more complicated, right, because a number of things are changing. Uh, but again, step through three or four time steps in detail, uh, and then you'll be able to uh, solve this no problem. All right, I think that's it. Talk to you later.